Hi, Deirdre McNamara here. This is the second video in Word 2013 looking at tables. Uh, we're just taking a look at some of the more advanced table features. Um, so if we click on insert and table, normally in the last video I showed you how you could click and drag, but you'll notice that you can't go down any further than eight uh, rows or across any further than 10 columns. Uh, and what happens if you want more than that? So if you want to do more than that, you click on insert table. And in here, for example, I could have two columns and I could go up to 30 rows. Okay, and it gives you a bit more control over the numbers and click on OK. So that gives you a, a table with a lot of rows in it. Um, OK, so the next thing that we're going to take a look at doing um, is using some of the built in design features that are available. Um, so if I select my table and in here, I can choose different sort of formatting. So if I click on, for example, this one here, you can see autumnal colors. And for example, um, if I select the table and choose a sort of a greeny color, you can see it's green. And there's very many different um, formatting features that you can choose that affect not only the shading, but also the borders or the lines that go around. Um, so I'm just going to undo both of those and go back to the standard uh, formatting. And we'll take a look at doing each of those uh, manually. The first thing we're going to take a look at doing is shading. So to put on shading, you need to select something first. So I'm going to select, for example, the first three rows up here. And in here, I can choose a particular color. So I'm going to choose uh, green. Now, remember, if your text is black, don't choose anything too dark. OK, so I'm going to choose a, a green like that. And maybe I might put it on the last few rows as well. Now, this time you'll notice because I use, chose green the last time, green is in the top half of the button. And if I click on the top half of the button, I get whatever color um, I had uh, selected the last time. OK, so I'm just going to undo that. OK, and now we'll take a look um, at borders. So, for example, if I wanted to select these rows here, uh, and in the borders area, I can choose to have, for example, no borders. So the structure is there. You can see the, the dotted lines or the grid lines displaying. So still um, the text will wrap around. Um, but those lines, if we click on file and print, and then I zoom in, you'll see that the lines actually don't print out. OK, um, so that's a no border option. OK, um, or we can select the area there uh, and we can put on, for example, all the borders again. And here is the colors uh, of the borders that are going on. So um, let's choose, uh, for example, a, uh, let me see, a, a wavy line. Let's choose uh, a purple in color um, and let's choose a, a thick um, area. Or, um, line weight uh, and we're going to put that in all positions and you can see here it's given us a thick uh, wavy purple line uh, in all on all of the selected uh, rows uh, now that's not great looking so I'm just going to undo all of that um, and now I've decided actually what, what I'd like is a plain black line um, so I'm going to go back and choose a plain border I'm going to choose the weight of that border and I'm going to choose the color of that border and I'm going to decide where it's going and click on all borders. Now, that might be what you want on most borders, but you may decide actually one or two of the lines I'd like to look a bit different. So if I want to do that. I can click on border painter. So if I click on border painter and decide that I want to go with a double line and I want to choose a thick double line and I'd like to make it red uh, now. I'm going to click and drag across one particular line and you can see it paints on a, just on the lines that I click and drag across, uh, which is very useful. OK, um, so uh, I could choose a different line, for example, um, a black, plain simple line, make it a very fat one and then change the color again. Maybe go to blue and I could draw in on those lines or around the edge and maybe Um, click and drag across. OK, so that's having a look at, at doing borders. 
um, and I'm going to just to come out of that I can just click on border painter again and my mouse turns back into an ordinary cursor uh, again. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you was how to merge cells. So at the moment, so when I put in text in here and I run out of space, it automatically wraps around and those lines um, stay solid. Um, I'll just undo that. Um, but if I wanted this to be one big cell, I could select the cells there like that, clicking and dragging with my left mouse, move over to the Layout tab and click on Merge Cells, which is this button up here. And this is now, and I'll just, I have some text pasted there. Um, this will now wrap around in one particular area and that becomes one big cell. I could decide to, for example, merge these cells over here and select clicking and dragging over there and click on merge cells. So that's a very useful feature. Um, sometimes you want to increase the number um, of uh, columns within an area or rows. So you select the cells that you want to do that to and then you can click on split cells and then type in the number of columns. So for example, you might want four columns. At the moment, there are four rows. That's fine. And click on OK. And you can see it divides it up into the number uh, of rows uh, that are available. By default, when you put text into a cell, it stays in the top left hand corner. So for example, if I type in the word text here, uh, you'll see that the word text is in the top, not the center, and not the right, but the top left corner of this particular cell. Uh, on the layout tab here, you'll see that the top left has been selected. I could make it, for example, top center, top right, middle right, bottom right, and you can see there are nine different positions uh, around the cell um, that you can position your text. Okay, there are many other options, but they're the main options that you use uh, in uh, Microsoft uh, Excel or Microsoft Word tables. Um, just one thing to be aware of, you'll notice that I have all the table tools um, available to me here. The minute I click outside the table, so this is the table, and when I click outside the table, you'll notice they disappear. And you're thinking, where are all my table stuff? Click on the table, and your table options then become uh, available to you. A new feature in Word uh, 2013 is the um, nice easy way there is to add in uh, new rows or new columns. So for example, I have a new table here in front of me, um, just a simple table with people's names listed here. And I think, oh, actually, I'd like to put in another name between the title name and the word Tom. So if I come out into the margin, the, mean, the minute I come out, I see this little plus sign. So if I click on the plus sign, it adds in another row. So I could type in Mary there. And you think, oh, actually, I need three columns. So again, if I move up here, once I'm outside of the table, and if I click the plus sign, you can see I can easily add in another uh, column. If, for example, you didn't want a column, you can select the column and go to the Layout tab. And in here, you've got Delete and Delete Columns. There's always within tables, there's um, the right mouse click, uh, and you've got Delete Columns um, available as well. So I could click on Delete Columns. Okay, that's the end of this video.